At the start of 1918, the British offensive grounds to a halt after the capture of Jerusalem. The Turks have time to gather reinforcements and strengthen their defensive lines. From Germany, an elite fighting unit called the Yildirim, or Lightning Group, has arrived, led by General Erich von Falkenhayn. The fresh German troops joined the attack with machine guns, artillery, and a complement of brand new fighter planes. In Germany, General Hindenburg and his staff have been planning a great offensive on the Western Front. On March 21, 1918, they unleash their mighty attack. Outnumbered by more than two to one, the Allied front collapses. Fearing that the war might be lost, London recalls 90,000 of General Allenby's best men from Palestine, along with heavy artillery, to block the German advance. Here I have raided the Hejaz Railway, 40 miles east of Jordan, and have done much damage, but my little show dwindles now into a very insufficient affair in comparison with events in Europe. When Allenby's men arrive in France, they are quickly reminded by their comrades in arms that the real war is in France, not in a far off desert. Allenby isn't the only general losing troops in Palestine. Enver Pasha has decided to begin a grand offensive in the Caucasus, where the Russian army has disintegrated. He steals some of the best troops from Palestine and doesn't even bother to consult with General von Sanders. Without giving me a hearing, orders are issued for the withdrawal of my most valuable troops, without which the front cannot be held, and the withdrawal of the remaining German formations, without which the war cannot be continued by Turkey. Sanders isn't alone in questioning the wisdom of Enver's new campaign. General Kamal also argues that Turkish troops should stay on the Palestine front. Uh, one school of thought exemplified by Mustafa Kemal, uh, who was the, the philosophical loser in this sense, was that Turkey should, should tighten up its defenses, should form strategic reserves and, and, and get ready for a defensive battle to, to retain what they, they had already uh, uh, conquered or, or held on to in the war. The other strategic idea was Enver Pasha's, and that, that's the, that, that the attack should be continued, that, that the successes of 1916 should be followed up. There were, in many ways, a surplus, of, a small surplus of forces available in 1917. By the summer of 1918, Turkish troops fighting in Palestine are suffering badly. They have no reserves and few supplies. Their clothes are in rags and they are hobbled by disease. Frequently, the troops aren't even sure if they will have food on the next day. Hungry ragged, verminous, comfortless, hopeless, outnumbered. Is it to be wondered that the Turkish soldiers lost heart? It is unlikely that any other troops in the world would have remained without collapse for so long a period of warfare under such conditions. The German offensive in France is gradually blunted by the Allies. U.S. soldiers have finally arrived in large numbers and the tide of battle begins to turn. By the fall of 1918, the Germans are the ones retreating. Allenby's forces have been restored, and he strikes the Turks on September 19, 1918, in a series of attacks that will become known as the Battle of Megiddo, the place where, according to the Bible, the final struggle between good and evil will be waged, Armageddon. Covering his right flank with a small mobile force and Lawrence's Arab guerrillas, Allenby sends his cavalry along the coast, where they break the enemy lines and swing to the east. The Turks, threatened with envelopment, retreat northeast in disorder. General von Sanders narrowly avoids being captured. He is reported to retreat in his pajamas. In the chaos that follows, the British take many prisoners. In one incident, 800 Turks surrender to an enemy officer they have just captured. In another incident, an entire regiment of Arab troops drop their guns and leave the field of battle. In the retreat toward Damascus, 
British planes drop nine tons of bombs on the enemy. The roads are strewn with dead soldiers, horses, and demolished wagons. I was more drawn to the idea of learning about people than of killing them. The only thing I killed all the war was a marauding dog, and I feel sorry about that still. In two days, the Turkish 7th and 8th armies are virtually destroyed. The disaster at Megiddo forces the Turkish general staff to realize that the war is lost in Palestine. It is only a matter of time before the Allies fight their way to Istanbul. <laughs>